Hello friends. Today this video which was presented by me at UP State Ophthalmic Conference which is held annually and this is about transcanalicular laser DCR. This was supposed to be part of an instruction course on DCR done by various techniques and I will be dealing about the laser DCR the instrumentation and technique. I hope this will help many of my fellow ophthalmologists who want to treat patients using DCR surgery using laser but are reluctant to do so. Now let us look at the options of managing the nasolacrimal duct blockage. So we have the most radical option that is DCT. Now DCT is basically removing whole of the sac so that there is no place for the debris from the tears to get collected and so there is least chance of having discharge and chances of acute decrocystitis. But this structure when it is removed cuts off the drainage absolutely in all the terms and there is no drainage of tears from these canaliculi and the patient will be left with watering but no discharge. And then we have the conventional open DCR where an incision is placed here over the area of the sac and this sac is opened and communication is made between this nasolacrimal sac and the middle meters in the nasal cavity. And then we have endonasal DCR where the same opening between the lacrimals nasolacrimal sac and the nasal cavity is formed by a root through the nose where this opening is made from here inside the nose and then we have more modern and least, least invasive methods of treating this disease of blockage in the nasolacrimal duct and that is by transcanalicular DCR which can be laser assisted or diathermy or radio frequency current. So the basic maneuver is that through this puncta and canaliculus a laser probe is advanced till it touches this particular area where it lies the lacrimal sac, the nasal bone and then the nasal mucosa and the laser or the diathermy whichever this tool heat generates heat at the tip which disintegrates the tissue and it causes an opening here which is then later on used by the bodily fluids to move from this area into the lacrimal sac and then hence drainage into the nasal cavity. Now what are, what are the requirements for the transcanalicular laser DCR? An appropriate laser source, it can be our 8-10 nanometer diode laser it can be a 918 nanometer diode laser or a 532 nanometer double frequency Yang laser. And these are the literature uh, evidences that people have used all these lasers to treat this kind of disease by using transcanalicular laser DCR. Then we need a laser fiber either a 20 gauge or a 23 gauge. The bent one is not the particular one which is to be used. So I have just kept it for a reference but this is not the choice and we should be using the, the laser probe which is marked here as green. Then we need a punctum dilator. Punctum dilator is basically a pointed tip instrument which is made of metal and this provides access to the puncta which is usually small in size and when we need to pass instruments into these we need to dilate it. This is also known as nettle ships punctum dilator. Then we have to have canalicular probe which comes in various sizes and the size which we are interested in is 00 to 01. So this is the list of instruments and paraphernalia which we need for performing transcanalicular laser DCR. 
Now these are the consumables which are needed for performing the surgery. So first is the local anesthesia which is used in form of a lignocaine 15% nasal spray, a lignocaine injection 2% which is to be infiltrated for nerve block of the supratrochlear and infraorbital nerves. We need a syringe, 26 gauge needle and a 23 gauge blunt cannula. A blunt cannula is used to infiltrate and irrigate the lacrimal sac by performing syringing using a lignocaine solution. Then we need balance all solution to do syringing and checking and flushing the nasolacrimal sac and flushing the contents when the surgery has been done. This will also confirm the patency of the passage. We need some antibiotic steroid eye drop and nasal decongestant drops which are to be used by the patient after the surgery for a follow up period of about one and a half months. Some cotton but no gauze because we are not going to pack the nasal cavity and we will just spray the 15% nasal spray in the nasal cavity. <clears throat> this is the procedure being performed. And this is a short video clip laser probe is being inserted and once the contact has been made at the bone we can see that there's a give a feel and the bone has been punctured including the lacrimal sac mucosa and the nasal mucosa then there are repeated attempts to enlarge this by putting the laser probe at the border of the opening which has been made and there's a slight increase which is done using the laser so the cavity is reasonably sized which cannot be seen in this picture but you can palpate and feel that it has been enlarged so that there's a play of the laser probe and there's some amount of movement which can be allowed at the level of the cavity now flushing this passage using the balance all solution and you can see it is in the nasal through the ostia it has been retracted now and we when we reaches to the patient's throat the patient swallows and we can see that make it out that the patient has fluid in the throat the surgery has been done it is bloodless it is quick it is painless and effortless procedure for the surgeon